My name is Roberta Annan. The title of my TED talk is Living Authenticity in an Inauthentic World. I am an African woman. However, relative to cultural constructs, norms, and practices, the narrowed lens of gender and race poses obstructions to the range of authentic expressions that make me uniquely one out of seven billion and counting. A woman of Ghanaian lineage and African ancestry, I live in a world where my gender and race presuppose my life's trajectory even before I get to introduce myself by my name, Yamaisa. The world has become too comfortable with lazy heuristics, signifiers, and categorizations attached to the appearance of melanin and gender. This to the detriment of experiencing the nuances and diversity, symbolism, language, and indigenous knowledge systems created by a tapestry of cultures throughout the world. How then does one show up authentically as a whole unique human being when the confluence of race, class, and gender are the tax etched upon us in opposition to the domain of Western Eurocentric paradigms? These vantage points belie all things remotely authentic about who we are or choose to be in place and time. However, an upswell of self-help books, podcasts, <laughs> webinars, workshops, retreat programs, and spiritual philosophies affirms the ubiquitous human truth that each of us is here to live authentically. Put simply, authenticity calls each of us to live in tune and in concert with our true self. It is the endeavor to operate from a place of alignment with our God, conscious, intuitive self, our inner voice, and internal radar system. Authenticity has been explored throughout history, from Greek philosophers to the work of Shakespeare. And I quote, to thy own self be true, by Polonius Hamlet. As I travel the world and continue to observe the phenomenon, it has appeared to me people and ideologies that remain closely connected to their cultural context, location or place of origin, are more inclined to remain authentic and true to themselves and purpose. However, the further away anything or anyone is located from their locus or stasis, as it were, the more difficult it is to draw an alignment or synchrony, particularly where this is sought externally. Children are often described as pure and innocent. While in their nascent stages of life, they are pure and innocent. As they grow older, overlaying the range of constructs that come with maturity, conditioned by the environment, their home, the school, and society, that once innocent child is shaped up or impacted by both negative and positive stimulus. The ability for individuals to tap into their intuitive or authentic selves is predicated on, for instance, minimal traumatic disruptions to their life experience, a reality that tends to be the purveyor of a privileged few in most societies. Still, in a challenging situation, Resilience is a positive and a favorable outcome. A prerequisite to resilience, therefore, self is self-awareness, which is remaining in tune with who you are while being open to the process of growth, sharpening core value systems, which ultimately lead to and ushers you in authenticity. And I can use an example of myself where I, at the young age of 16, I lost my stepfather and my stepfather um, passed away in my arms. And I remember at that young age, I was very confused, hurt, and so many emotions were going on at that time, especially because at that particular moment, my mother was not in town. So I had to break the news to her and then I also had to find a way to manage myself, you know, financially. I was very confused.
But I remember that experience also propelled me to gaining more resilience because I became an adult overnight. Um, I had to care for my, not only my emotions, but the emotions of my mother. I had to manage and control things at that tender age. And that forced me to face many more challenges to come as I grew older. Challenges in business, challenges in my personal life, challenges with friendships and with other relationships. And this is what resilience is about. It's having that strength, inner strength, to be able to overcome any situation, regardless of how bad the situation is. Similarly, indigenous communities whose livelihood, their way of life, cultural norms, and practices disrupted by colonialism, which was the invasion that severed the natural connections entire civilizations had with their land, with their ancestors, with their heritage and culture, fundamentally changed the world. The Atlantic and transatlantic slave trade informed mass disruptions and the disorientation of communities who once lived in great alignment to their environments and ecosystems. The forced assimilation of communities of African people over centuries took place to the detriment of their human rights for generations to follow. The negative impact of mass oppression and denigration of black people has in recent times, not only with the civil rights and anti-apartheid movement, but also in the 21st century anti-racism and anti-police brutality, protests peaking in the United States today. There could be no clearer reflection of the limitations of advancements of society and the world at large when both leaders and individuals operate inauthentically. Arthur Breen Brown, a research of University of Houston, defines authenticity as the choice to let our true selves be seen. Are you willing to let your true self be seen? I would add this. This is also predicated on whether the environment affords all people the same latitude and benefits to really be seen. How do we live authentically when it is precisely by moving from the innate position of wanting to exercise the right to show up in the world as our true self and be seen that we are often denigrated, judged, oppressed, and are attacked? Some threatened by and or uncomfortably by others, presenting their true and authentic self in the world, which is something that I have experienced many a time in a business where people feel that I am not meant to be in a certain position or I'm not meant to have certain opp opportunities because I'm not from a certain background. It is often very challenging. Living bravely is living from a place of absolute truth. Breaking free from the seductions and constructs of society, daring to live on our own terms, values, and in alignment with our unique set of dreams and ambitions, intuitively excel. At the same, authenticity also holds space for our vulnerability. There is strength and honesty in also being present to our vulnerabilities. Devoid of the narrative or limiting beliefs that inhibit the freedom to experience radical self-love and healing. An inauthentic world sets up limitations, not only relative to our external environment, it fundamentally also creates systems that result in the internalization of these limitations, pertinent to advancing the agenda of the select few, economically, racially, gender, class, religious, and or geopolitical. As we work through these uncertain times, not only resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic, but also racial injustice itself, a pandemic, we must also begin to revisit that authentic leadership is and looks like to diverse audiences around the world. The following from an old Forbes magazine article still resonate, a succinctly capturing principle. I believe we ought to demand of our leaders as we chart the road ahead beyond these unprecedented times. Authentic leaders 
are self-aware and generous, okay? Authentic leaders are self-actualized individuals who are aware of their strengths, their limitations, and their emotions, and they're able to manage this. They also show their real selves to their followers. They do not act one way in a private and another in public. They don't hide their mistakes or weaknesses out of fear of looking weak. They also realize that being self-actualized is an endless journey never complete. Number two, authentic leaders are mission-driven and focused on results. They are able to put the mission and the goals of the organization, the nation, or the group ahead of their own self-interest. They do the job in pursuit of results, not for their own power, money, or ego. Number three, authentic leaders lead with their heart. They are not afraid to show their emotions, their vulnerability, and to connect with their employees. This does not mean authentic leaders are soft. In fact, communicating in a direct manner is critical to successful outcomes, but it is done with empathy directness. Without empathy, it's chaos. Number four, authentic leaders focus on the long term and not blindsided by short term distractions. Finally, I would like to close by urging us to envision a world not fueled by fear, but authentically by love, as captured in these poignant words by an unknown author. And I quote, Authenticity is freedom from the illusion of fear and alignment to the reality of love. Thank you.